Hey everyone, this is Andrew Tarr and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today is a very special day. It is the full release of macOS Monterey. And who better to introduce it to you than Mr. Macintosh himself, the master Macintosh system administrator. On his channel, he has tons of videos dedicated to analyzing and going through all the little details of the latest macOS updates. And he also runs one of the best Mac system administrator blogs on the internet. And he also has some extremely useful blog posts. For example, this is a full list of all of the direct links for the Monterey beta full installers, which are very hard to find on the internet and I personally have referenced this many times in my videos in the past too. Anyway today Mr Macintosh is going to be talking about the five most exciting new features about macOS Monterey. So Mr Macintosh please take it away. Hey everybody, Mr. Megatash here and Andrew, thank you very much for that welcome and the opportunity to be on your channel. Today we're going to talk about the top five macOS Monterey features that are going to matter the most to you. We got lots to cover, let's jump in and get started. Let's start off with number five, low power mode for MacBook Pro and MacBook Air. Let's take a look at that feature. If we go to Apple's macOS Monterey feature page, we'll see under Mac experience, low power mode. And here's a description, reduces the system clock speed and display brightness to extend the battery life. So this is gonna be a great feature when you are on the road or you need to be able to conserve battery power. Here's how it works. You need to enable this manually. You will not get a pop-up like you do on iOS, for example, when your iPhone says, hey, you're 20% of battery, would you like to enable low power mode? So let's take a look at how to use that. So I've got a 13 inch M1 MacBook Pro here so we can go over how to use this new feature. All you need to do is go into system preferences and then click on battery and then click on battery again and then here's low power mode. So let's read what that says. Your Mac will reduce energy uses to increase battery life and operate more quietly. So the fans won't be kicking on as much either because the CPU will be cut by maybe up to 40%. So let's look at that. So if we turn on low power mode right now, now it's activated, that's all we need to do. How do we confirm that that's on? All we need to do is go up to the battery up here and we can see low power mode on. So let's turn it back off and then we'll see what that looks like. It doesn't say low power mode off, it just doesn't show you that low power is on. So when we go back to turn it on, what it's also gonna do is it's going to reduce the display brightness if automatically adjust brightness is activated. So now let's take a look at some performance benchmarks to see how this works. So we wanna see what is actually being affected by this. So what I did is I ran some benchmarks. The first benchmark with low power mode off, we got a, a standard normal score of 1745, or a single core and a 7684 for a multi-core score with Geekbench 5. When I went in there and activated low power mode, this is what we got, 1055 and 4391. So the Geekbench score in both single core and multi-core was 40 and 42% less. Now again, you might think, oh my gosh, the, the system's running 42% slower, but the good news is all the tasks that I've been using on this system work just fine. So just think of the battery life that you're gonna be able to have with this system. System. It's a wonderful feature and that's number five, low power mode. Okay, let's take a look at number four, iCloud Private Relay. iCloud Private Relay is a service that lets you connect to virtually any network and browse with Safari in an even more secure and private way. It ensures that traffic leaving your device is encrypted so that no one can intercept and read it. Then all of your requests are sent through two separate internet relays. It's designed that so no one, including Apple, can use your IP address, location, and browsing activity to create a deep detail profile about you. This is really exciting. And the way to get this enabled is, is that it doesn't come for free. You have to use an iCloud Plus account to be able to get access to iCloud Private Relay. So let's take a close look at that. If we go to the iCloud Plus plans and pricing, you can see all of the different plans that you can get for iCloud Plus. So the beginning plan, you get 50 gigabytes of storage, iCloud Private Relay right here, hide my email, custom email domain, and HomeKit Secure video support for one camera. So when you scroll down here, it'll show you the different prices for each country. So for example, in the United States, it costs 99 cents per month for the beginning plan. So about $12 a year to get that included. So I think that's a really great deal. Plus you get the 50 gigabytes of storage and backup with iCloud. Okay, let's go over number three, live text in photos. This is a really new cool feature of macOS Monterey. Text is now completely interactive in all of your photos. So you can use functions like copy, paste, 
look up and translate. Live text works in Photos, Screenshot, Quick Look, and Safari. Okay, let's take a look at how this works. So I've got an article here that I just wrote and I've got this image here. So let's take a look at how to copy the text in this image. You know, all we need to do is click on it once and then you'll see the cursor turn to the text and you can just highlight all the text like this. Once it's highlighted, you can right or control click in there and then click Copy. And then you can open up any text editor, click in the middle there and do a command V or right click and paste. Now look at that, right from that image. Now that's not the coolest feature yet. Let's take a look at this. The translate feature is really cool. This is Chinese here and we wanna be able to say, what does this say? So this is an image and all we need to do is bring that cursor over here like we did and then highlight all the text like this and then right click on it and then click translate. Look at that, fully translated. What a cool new feature. Let's go over number two, AirPlay 2 Mac. This is a great new feature. It's been available from third-party vendor applications before, but now with macOS Monterey, it's native to the Mac. So let's say you wanna be able to use a second Mac to be able to extend your screen wirelessly. You can do it with AirPlay to Mac. Let's say you wanna use your iPhone to be able to share its screen to your Mac. You can do that. You can mirror the display or just extend the display. Plus you can use it as an AirPlay two speakers so let's say you have your phone and you want to play a song in your iMac across the room you can do it now and you can also send it with wireless or a USB connection or a Thunderbolt connection to be able to get the highest bandwidth so let's take a closer look at that new feature okay I got my M1 MacBook Pro here and I want to be able to extend the display wirelessly to my M1 Mac mini and its monitor right next to this we got to click on the airplay icon in the menu bar up here because it detects that there is an AirPlay monitor close at 2020 M1 Mac Mini. All we need to do is click connect and it will automatically extend the display and I can just bring my mouse cursor right over and use this as a whole nother display. Let's talk about Mac OS Monterey's most anticipated new feature for our number one, universal control. With universal control, you can use a single keyboard, mouse, or trackpad to work between both devices. When you move from your Mac to your iPad, the cursor for your mouse or trackpad transforms from an arrow to a round dot, automatically changing shape to the one that best suits your device. There's no setup for universal control either. It works effortlessly with all your devices that are connected to iCloud. Simply use your mouse or trackpad to push the cursor from one device forward to another until it pops up onto the second device. Then you can move the cursor seamlessly between the two. There's also support for multiple devices. You can use up to three devices for universal control. So you can see Craig in this video showing that he's using it on an M1 iMac, an M1 MacBook Pro, and an iPad. So he can take something from his iMac, put it onto his MacBook Pro, or take something from his iPad and drag it to his new iMac. This is a wonderful new feature. Now the feature isn't available right now at the Mac OS Monterey launch. It will be available later this fall. So it might come out in Mac OS Monterey 12.1 or 12.2, and we'll keep apprised of that situation when it happens. And that is, the top five features that you want to know about for macOS Monterey. I hope you enjoy this and I hope you're excited about the new release of macOS Monterey. It's available right now to download. Open up System Preferences, make sure you back up your file and hit upgrade. Andrew, thank you very much for having me on your channel. It was a really great experience working with you and we'll talk to you soon. Thank you.